understand. Today, so many people I meet around the world have the same questions. Wallahi al It doesn't matter which part of the planet you go, people have the same confusions today. Same questions over and over again. And one of the most common questions I hear is people say, you know, there are so many different versions of Islam. So many different videos about what the Qur'an means, or what hadith means. And some people believe in this, and other people believe in that. This shaykh gives this fatwa, that one gives that fatwa. Should I follow this, or should I follow that? Somebody says this is halal, somebody says this is haram, I don't know anything anymore. It's all confusing. There's so many variations. How am I supposed to get guidance? How do I know if I'm even following the right thing? How am I supposed to know? It's too much information for me to process. And I agree, we are living in information overload. We are, there we, we are bombarded with so many different perspectives, even within Islam. Look at the audience that is sitting in this hall. Even though we're locals from this area, most of us, the way that you've learned about Islam from the person next to you is very different. The teachers you've had, the people you've been exposed to, the lessons you've learned, they're very different from each other. So there's a lot of variation in how we are exposed to Islam, and a person gets overwhelmed and says, how am I supposed to know if I'm even following the right thing? And you know what, this ayah is the answer. I don't guarantee guidance, and YouTube doesn't guarantee guidance. And Google doesn't guarantee guidance. And people don't guarantee guidance. It is our hope that Allah Himself will give me personally guidance. Guidance will not come from anywhere else. Whether you have no information or over information, that doesn't matter. That Allah will guide you to the right course depends on how much you ask Allah, not anyone else. And once you ask Allah, you don't have to be nervous anymore. Because you have absolute certainty that Allah will give you guidance. He does not turn anyone away. Getting guidance from Allah is not difficult. It is not difficult. Allah has opened the door of guidance wide open for those who seek it. We just have to be people who seek it. That's it. I mean, this ayah belongs to Surah Al-Kahf. And I can't talk enough about Surah Al-Kahf as is evidenced in this khutbah. But these, these Ashab Al-Kahf, these people of the cave that we read about every Friday, these people have no prophet around them, no alim around them, no shaykh around them, no sahabi around them. They're by themselves. And they live in a village where everybody worships idols. And they come to a conclusion that, you know, there can only be one God. They don't even know how to say it. And, and just, we can't worship these things. We can't worship other gods. And that was enough for Allah to guide them. With no knowledge. With no revelation, nothing. That was enough for Allah to guide them, and guide them so much, that today, people who study the deen for years and years and years, study tafasir of these young men who knew nothing, compared to the ulama that learned from them. Because they got Allah's guidance. Because Allah would give them guidance. Because it doesn't matter how, you know, how dark your situation is, how hopeless it is, when you have hope in Allah, that's enough. That's just enough. عَسَىٰ أَن يَهْدِيَنِي رَبِّي لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدَ Now the last and what I consider the most beautiful part of this expression. Perhaps Allah will guide me. Guide me to what? Guide me to what? He says, لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدَ You know the language of this is so profound. And you know, in a khutbah, I, don't, I can't give you grammar lessons because you'll have a headache. So I want to try to make this as simple as I can. In the Arabic language, sometimes you say over there. And sometimes you say all the way over there. When you say all the way over there, you're saying that I'm, I'm guiding you to your destination. If you just say over there, maybe you get over there, then you have to go somewhere else, and somewhere else, and somewhere else. But if I say all the way over there, then I've told you that that's where you have to go, you don't have to go any further than that. When the lam is used, عَسَىٰ أَن يَهْدِيَنِ رَبِّي لِي أَقْرَبَ Lam. This lam, what it suggests, this is al-muntaha. It's, there's no higher thing to ask for in this dunya. If you get this, there's nothing better to ask for. If the word ilah was used, then you get there, then you get go for something else and go for something else. You see? So what I'm asking Allah in this ayah, and what you're asking Allah in this ayah, is for something that if you have it, there's nothing better. It is the ultimate end. Now what is that ultimate end? He says, لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا Closer than this. I hope Allah will guide me closer, all the way closer than this. What does the word this mean? This means where I am right now. Now let's understand what this means in simple language. All of us, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, have some degree of guidance. The fact that we're sitting in the house of Allah on Jumu'ah means Allah has given us some guidance. Some people Allah has given more guidance, some Allah has given less guidance. Some have more knowledge, some have less knowledge. Some have better attention when they pray, some have less attention when they pray. We're not all on the same level, that's a fact. 
But you know what this dua is telling you? My ultimate goal is to get closer to Allah than I am today. I am not here to compare myself to someone else. I am just here to compare myself from where I am right now. If I can just work on getting better than what I am right now, that is the ultimate success before Allah. There is no higher success. You will never become perfect, I will never become perfect. All we can work on is becoming a little bit better, and then a little bit better, and then a little bit better. Just getting a little closer to Allah and a little closer, and if a person dies, becoming closer to Allah, they are successful. You don't, and a lot of people, you know what they do? They compare themselves to others. Well, this one's already memorized the entire Qur'an. Look at how they recite. They're at the masjid every single day. They're there before the idhan is even called. They're, you know, they're worshipping Allah so much more. They're so much more knowledgeable. They have so much more, they, they know Arabic, they know tafsir, they know this, they know that. You know, or they dress better as Muslims than I do. You know? Don't compare yourself to anybody else. That's not what Allah wants. Allah is not gonna put you next to someone else and compare. He doesn't even want you to compare yourself to others in dunya. Forget akhirah. Not even in dunya. لا تتمنوا ما فضل الله به بعضكم على بعض. Don't wish for what other people have. What Allah has given some preference over others. Don't do that to yourself. So what, is, what are we learning then? We're learning that if for example, you're starting to recite Qur'an today. You, you're 35 years old. You haven't, read, you haven't even opened the book for 30 years. And you decide to start reading Qur'an today, you can't even get through Bismillah, you don't even know what a ba looks like anymore. Now you have to learn like children. There are people who are your age who can read like adults, but you have to read like a child. But that's okay. That's okay. When you learn even that alif or that ba, and you make a little bit stronger, closer to Allah, and you died that way, maybe you're better than even a alim. Maybe you're better than a hafiz of Qur'an, who memorized the whole book but has no appreciation, didn't want to make themselves a better person. Because who wants to make themselves a better person is in the heart. And Allah knows that. So don't underestimate where you are with Allah. People can underestimate you, Allah does not underestimate you. People make it sound like guidance from Allah is hard, it's expensive, it doesn't come easy. And Allah is opening the doors of it wide open. He's just asking for you and me to embrace it and say, Ya Allah, guide me. Bring me a little closer to yourself. لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا Rashadan in terms of uprightness, in terms of guidance. The last word of this ayah, Rashadan, actually acknowledges that the, the fact that you're making this dua means that you're already on some guidance. That you shouldn't say that I'm misguided. It already acknowledged that the, the, the fact that Allah gave you the ability to make this dua itself is a gift of guidance from Him. And Allah will give you more, and He will give you more, and He will give you more. This is the optimism of the Muslim. When guidance comes in this world, then tama'nina comes. You know, itmi'nan comes. A heart becomes tranquil. Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'inna al And this is what I want to conclude with. When a heart becomes tranquil, when a heart becomes at peace, then the people around that person, they're also, the, the peace is infectious. That iman is infectious. Peace spreads in the family. Peace spreads among friends. Peace spreads in a community when guidance comes. If the problem of the world is, is conflict, hatred, if the problem of the world is war, then the solution to that is not other policies or more weapons. That's not the solution. It's not economic sanctions. What, the, what humanity needs is guidance. Because without guidance, you can't have peace. You just can't. Who deserves more peace? Those who believed, those who came to Iman. This is what we're asking Allah Azza wa Jal. When you and I make dua for peace in the world, for peace in the Muslim lands, for peace for those who are oppressed, when we make those duas, then we're actually directly, directly asking Allah to increase us and the world around us in guidance. May Allah Azza wa Jal increase all of us in guidance and make us of those who are positive about their future, their own future, the future of their children, the future of this ummah, and the future of the world over. This entire world, we have to be concerned for it. Not just our own ummah, the entire world. We are the millah of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam used to be concerned for all of humanity. That is the legacy that we've, we've inherited. So we have to be optimistic about the entire world. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us that way and make our future generation a beaming example of what it means to live the beautiful teachings of this book.